Hi everyone. Um, so my last video was the Birdie Bots Every Flavored Bean sort of challenge. It wasn't really a challenge. I just wanted to taste some of the gross ones and see if I could handle them or not. I would eaten all the um, yummy ones before I took that video. So like Tutti Frutti and um, Cherry. There weren't very many good ones. <laughs> Most of them were either earthworm or dirt or like grass. But And grass wasn't too bad though. It was just it was just kind of, it was, it tasted like grass, but it really wasn't that bad considering I tasted a vomit one. But anyways, today I want to show you all my Studio Ghibli collection. Um, if you don't know what Studio Ghibli is, it is a, originally a Japanese um, film studio headed by Hayao Miyazaki as director and, um, oh, what's his name? Ah, uh, now I can't remember the name of the... Toshiro Suzuki, I think his name is. Oh, he's not, the producer. I'm trying to remember the producer's name for most of the films. But it says, mm, sorry, now I'm all out of order. Yeah, it's Toshiro Suzuki. Okay, so I was right. It's Toshiro Suzuki. And Disney bought the rights to Studio Ghibli not too long ago to start um, dubbing the animated films for English audiences. So progressively over the years, Disney has been doing this with each of Hayao Miyazaki's or Studio Ghibli's films in general. So I want to show you the ones that I currently own. My collection is almost complete. I'm missing some films. Some of them have not yet been dubbed from Japanese to English, so I'm waiting for that to happen, and when they do, I will be the first one to buy them. So, the first film, it was actually before uh, Studio Ghibli existed. It was Hayao Miyazaki's first, uh, well, technically no, but it was his first uh, feature with producer Isao Takahata, who also uh, directs a lot of the other Studio Ghibli films that are very popular, but his first masterpiece that sort of preempted the creation of Studio Ghibli is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. It's a very good movie. You should all watch it. I'm not really going to go into too much depth about these films. I'm just going to show you all of them because I have quite a few. I'm probably going to do smaller film reviews once I'm in another vlog. So this is the first one. This is Nausicaa of the Valley of Wind. Following that, I got them all in order now, but following that is Grey, um, sorry, Castle in the Sky, which I do have. Very good film. Castle in the Sky. After that, I do not own this film, it is one of the ones I need to purchase, it is Grave of the Fireflies. And it is not directed by Hayao Miyazaki, it's directed by Isao Takahata, but it is a very real touching film. It is very good. It's just a very different, sort of different animation style from Hayao Miyazaki. Following that, most people know this film is My Neighbor Totoro. Totoro is a very popular plushie, one of which I have a little mini figure. I'll show you. See? It's a very tiny, very fat Totoro. But yeah, that was one of his most pop one of his most popular films. It was made in conjunction with Grave of the Fireflies, like they were being created at the exact same time, which was kind of hectic. Um, following that is Kiki's Delivery Service. I don't even have words for this movie. It's just so adorable. Watch it. After that, he, he made a film called Only Yesterday. Sorry, not Hayao Miyazaki. This was Isao Takahata, once again, who made the film Only Yesterday. It is not, it is one of Studio Ghibli's films that has not been put into in, an English adaptation yet. I think it's one of the few. Yeah, actually. It is the only feature film by um, Studio Ghibli that has not yet been produced in an English adaptation, which is unfortunate, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Porco Rosso is the one following it, and it's about a pig pilot 
it's just everyone thinks it's going to be a really terrible movie because it is a pig pilot but it's actually a really good movie it's not focusing on that um following Poco Rosso's Palm Poco which I do not have it is about uh, raccoons a big family of raccoons trying to live in the modern world and trying to get by in the modern world and what that means following Palm Poco in 1995 comes Whisper of the Heart and this is by a new director it is di is directed by Yoshifumi Kondo but Hayao Miyazaki is the screenwriter so he's still involved he's usually involved in all these movies in some ways if he's not directing them so they always have sort of his touch to them Following Whisper of the Heart was one of his highest grossing films ever, Princess Mononoke, which was made, I believe, in 99. Oh, no, 97. It was made in 97. And it is very, it is more violent than his other films, but it is still really well done, well animated. Following Princess Mononoke in 98, I believe, let me just double check that, in 99, I keep messing up the dates, in 99, we have a very different animation style by Isao Takahata in My Neighbors the Yamadas. Jim Belushi is one of the voices in this, which makes me like it so much more because I'm not quite a fan of the simplistic animation style, though it is it is captivating, but it's more it seems like it's for younger audiences just because of the simple animation style. Following My Neighbors the Yamadas is the winner of the Academy award for best animated fe feature 2001 is Spirited Away. If you haven't seen this movie, just that's pretty much what I'm going to say for all of them. See it. They're all really amazing movies, but this one won best academy um best pick or animated film for the Academy Awards in 2001. So that must mean something. <laughs> Following Spirited Away, we have The Cat Returns in 2002. This is sort of a prequel to Whisper of the Heart because this character, the Baron, is a, an inanimate object, an, 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 excuse me, an inanimate figurine in Whisper of the Heart. And this story seems to have, it was made after Whisper of the Heart, but it is sort of set before Whisper of the Heart occurs. Following the Cat Returns is Howl's Moving Castle, one of my favorite Hayao Miyazaki films. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's set in sort of a European style um, country and it's just so beautiful. So, watch it. Let's get moving because it's an eight minute video now. So, following Howl's Moving Castle, we have Tales from Earthsea. This is based on a book. So is Howl's Moving Castle. A lot of them are based off of books. Tales from Earthsea is based off of a book, but it is not directed by Hayao Miyazaki, it is directed by his son, Goro Miyazaki, which is really cool. But it is, it has a very similar animation to Hayao Miyazaki's films, but the theme is more serious and there's not as much humor as there is in the other Hayao Miyazaki films or in any other Studio Ghibli films, really. So that is kind of the defining difference between Goro Miyazaki and his father. Following Tales from Earthsea is the Little Mermaid adaptation for Ponyo. Ponyo was really popular in 2008 when it came out in America because it featured the voices of um, the younger siblings of popular pop icons at that time, Miley Cyrus and the Jonas Brothers. So Frankie Jonas, the younger brother of the Jonas Brothers, and Noah Cyrus, the youngest sister of Miley Cyrus, were the featured voices in this film. Following Ponyo last year, um, in America anyways, Arietti, The Secret World of Arietti was released. I could only find the Blu-ray version. There's no simply DVD version, but it's fine because I have a Blu-ray edition as well. And this is just a beautiful movie and it's once again it's based off of a book. The next one up is called From Up on Poppy Hill and I can't wait to see it and May, probably in future vlogs now that I have the idea, I will probably do little mini film reviews of each of these different films, starting with Nausicaa and moving up to Arietti. And maybe by that time I'll have From a Fun Poppy Hill. So I hope you guys will have a good weekend, and I will see you 
Maybe not this weekend, but hopefully by Monday. Bye.